Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I gotta start by apologizing because my voice isn't very good tonight, but the doctors have assured me that my balls will drop any day now. So, I'll be okay. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be fine. Oh, it's so good to be here with you guys. Get out of, yeah, woo! Get out of the house for a bit. Get away from the TV, frankly. That's all I need to do is, I'm watching too much reality television and it's making me hate myself. Like, I can't stop watching the new season of Survivor. If you haven't seen it, it's amazing. It's 350 million contestants stranded in America <laughs> for four years. I am watching the shit out of that. It's amazing. They think the winner gets to come to Canada. Fuck no. We're gonna build a wall. <laughs> with our much cheaper steel. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I just, actually, I just finished binge watching the second season of Making a Murderer, and that on Netflix, oh my God. Like, that's incredible. Like, it's such a mystery. Like, did you know that Stephen Avery has had a girlfriend the entire time he's been in prison? Like, who do I have to fucking kill to get a boyfriend, right? <laughs> I'm single a long time. I'm really surprised my mother hasn't started planting DNA in my bedroom just to try to get me a wrongful conviction. <laughs> I think we're setting the bar a little high now to get a date. It's not enough to swipe. You have to swipe somebody with a knife. Like, oh. oh my God. I just got back from Montreal. I was working in Montreal this weekend. And uh, Friday, oh, Friday was a bad day to have a bad day in Montreal. First off, their pot stores ran out of supply. Nothing, like they can't even open full time. Like it's bad. And then just to kick them in the nuts while they were down, the SAQ, the Quebec liquor stores went on strike. Oh. Fuck you! <laughs> TGI, fuck you! <laughs> like that's what that was. It was brutal. People just wandering around, <laughs> not knowing what to do. <laughs> hey buddy, you can get beer at the Deppener. <gasps> oh! <laughs> Some cheap wine at a Provigo. Yeah, it was sad. <laughs> I was actually, I was, I'm opposed to legalization. I didn't want to have legalization because I don't want the government tracking my recreational activities. No, I want to buy my weed from a less successful comic in a basement apartment <laughs> using cash as God intended. That's how I get my freak on. Yes, no, I'm not doing it this way. Paying the government to smoke weed. What? That is stupid. Next, they're gonna have me pay for dick. <laughs> dick control board. <laughs> yeah, I'll take the 40 answer. Let's do this. <laughs> I had shoulder surgery earlier this year, and uh, my arm was gonna be in a sling for six weeks, so I needed some help after, su after the surgery, so my mom moved in with me. Oh yeah, no, that's the right response, I get that. We're not close. We're like North and South Korea. We're not still fighting a war, but the peace treaty was never signed, you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, it was just, I realized my mom just doesn't seem to understand what's important sometimes. Like, the night before my surgery, I took her out for dinner to say thanks for everything she was gonna do for me, break the ice a little bit. And she said, listen, Heather, I don't want you to worry about anything. And I said, oh, I'm, okay, mom, I can stay surgery, it'll be fine. She goes, no, no, I mean, I don't want you to worry about my death. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wasn't. <laughs> sort of hoping for it a little bit right now. <laughs> She said, I've, I've made all the arrangements. I bought a place for my ashes and there's room for one more. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly, exactly. Is that how you start a suicide pact? I don't know. <laughs> I knew I'd see her in hell. I just didn't expect to be roommates. <laughs> you haven't hit rock bottom as a single woman until you find out your mother's worried you're gonna be alone in the afterlife as well. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> 
But she was, she was a big help, you know, she cooked and cleaned for me, and she offered to help me with my sponge baths, which I took a hard pass no on. That was, no, yeah, because, like, I just didn't want to have to explain to her why I don't have pubic hair. <laughs> Pretty sure last time she saw my badge, there was no pubic hair, and I didn't think she'd buy the idea it hadn't grown in. So, that was going to be awkward. <laughs> Right, exactly. What's missing? It's all missing, Mom. I'm albino from the waist down. Oh. Uh, 2017 was like a really important year because that's when women started talking about the sexual harassment that they, sorry. 2017 was an important year because that was the year that men started listening to women talk about the sexual harassment that they face. And um, I'm going to share with you something that happened to me. Uh, last summer, I was in Toronto and I was walking around downtown, looking at my cell phone, not paying attention. And I stepped on a subway grate and my skirt blew up over my head and there were two men right behind me. And do you know what they said to me? Nothing! Not a goddamn thing! What do I gotta do to get some attention, huh? See something, say something. Isn't that the rule? I'm single. I stood on that grate for 10 minutes. Nothing. Nothing. I don't need this. I got a lock working against me. Like, men are afraid to talk to me already because I speak in a mic for a living. I don't need the Me Too movement coming out in here and making them more afraid. No, it's hard. It's bad enough that I have to compete against short girls who wear six inch platform heels, perpetrating a fraud and playing outside their hype bracket to steal tall men from me. I don't fucking need this. And now I gotta worry about the transgender community because I can't compete against somebody who is a dick, a big rack, fierce contouring. It's not fucking fair. It's not fair. It's hard out here for a bitch. I don't need this. I've been single a long time. And like, I get it. I know why. I know what I look like. Like, I look like that older lady in your neighborhood that you deaf would. <laughs> but that you deaf wouldn't tell your friends about. <laughs> and that's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It just makes it easier for me to fuck all your friends. <laughs> They're like Pokemon to me. <laughs> I'm gonna collect them all. Everybody, my name is Heather Hurst. You've been amazing, thank you so much.